In this segment, I want to talk about the telescope. But first, in order to talk about this telescope, let's talk about the magnifier instead. And so, you know, if we get here real close to the camera, then, you know, you can see my eyeball real big there. Um, if we get a little bit closer to the camera, notice that you see my whole face real big. Really, as I get farther from the camera, the size of my eyeball really doesn't change that much. You're just able to see less and less of my face. However, the apparent size of my eyeball remains quite large. You just see more of my face if I'm up close. So in order to kind of wrap our brains around a microscope, let's talk real quick about the magnifier. Because really a microscope is just two magnifiers put together. So here is a schematic of the magnifier. Um, and we can see here that a magnifier is a single converging lens. And we put the object inside but close to the focal point. And what that does is it gives us a virtual image that is upright and a little bit farther away. You might say, well, if it moves the image farther away, how does it act as a magnifier? Things that are farther away are harder to see. Well, and the answer is it makes it larger also. So it does make it larger and farther away, but it sort of makes it taller faster than it makes it farther away. Uh, the, end, the net effect is that the angle that this object, that this image, excuse me, subtends is greater through the magnifier than it is not through the magnifier. So the original object would have subtended an angle like this in our eyeball. However, the magnified image subtends this angle here. It is a much greater angle and therefore it's filling up more of our vision and producing a larger image on our retina. Right? We have to remember that as we're talking through this, uh, this really is not exactly a one lens system because we have the eyeball involved, right? And ultimately we're talking about the image that gets formed on the retina. That's kind of what we care about because we're humans and that's what we do with our eyes, right? So it forms this virtual image, which is upright, as you saw in uh, when I just demonstrated that. Now we can calculate the magnification. So the angular size of the object is greater than, with the magnifier than without. And so what we can do is calculate the magnification. And it turns out that it is 25 centimeters over the focal point, and I'm focal length. And I'm not going to go into uh, the derivation of that. This 25 centimeters here comes from the uh, near point of a typical person's eyeball. So typically we will want the object at that 25 centimeters, or just a little bit inside of that 25 centimeters. M is the angular magnification of the magnifier. And so, you know, I went online and I found this and it claimed it was 10x, uh, which theoretically means it has 10 times magnification. Okay, so a microscope really is just a couple of magnifiers put together. A combination of lenses can get magnifications that are much greater than the magnification that we might get from just a single lens system. The, in, in this case, in multiple lens systems, the image of the first lens acts as the object for the second lens. Now, we already kind of did that when we talked about the eyeball, right? We talked about how corrective lenses create an image which then your eyeball is within the range of where your eyeball can focus on. So one way to wrap our brains around the way corrective lenses work is they form an image of the object we're trying to see, and that image becomes the object for our eyeball cornea system. Right? So we kind of already talked about that a little bit. Um, here's a typical modern uh, microscope. Um, and it, contain, it can attain magnification of up to a thousand. Right? So again, this is my magnifier that I bought on Amazon, and it is a 10x. So we can get a much greater magnification with a microscope, with a, just a couple of lenses, than we can with a single lens. Um, so we have two lenses here. We have the objective lens, which is right here. And this particular microscope has three different objective lenses that you can use for three different powers. And then it has an eyepiece, which is an, acts just as an ordinary magnifier and it's out here. Now, there's a prism in here to bend the light. It uses total internal reflection because we get more light out of the eyepiece if we use total internal reflection from a prism than we do from a mirror. 
but it basically just bends the light. So really, uh, we're going to kind of ignore this from here on out, and we're going to talk about how the objective lens works together with the eyepiece in order to create a very large image. If we need to focus, we use the focus knob, and that doesn't actually change the optical path at all. What it changes is where the sample is, so it actually moves the sample stage up and down, and that's how we achieve a focus. So here's a little schematic. The object distance is slightly greater than the focal length, and so we do get a real image. So this first lens isn't quite being used exactly in the same way as the magnifier was. This is being used more like our camera, I suppose, um, where we do have the object close to, but still slightly outside of, the focal point of my objective lens. However, what this objective lens does is it forms a real image right here. And that real image then becomes the object for the eyepiece lens. We call this distance L, and that's the distance from the objective lens to where the real image is formed from that objective lens. In modern microscopes, this has been standardized to 160 millimeters. This is very common. So in the equations that I'm going to present, we're assuming a barrel length here for this uh, microscope of 160 millimeters. So if you're not told L, then you can assume it's 160 millimeters, and that will basically always be the case. The eyepiece then acts just like the magnifier we just discussed, but now it's magnifying this real image. It's not magnifying the uh, my eyeball, right? It, it's magnifying an image. So the image from the first lens becomes the object for the second lens. And to focus the microscope then, we basically move the object until we form the nice image right at L, and then the whole thing comes into focus. Doing a little bit of math, the magnification for the objective lens is given by the length, that, and then that's that standard 160 millimeters, divided by the focal length of the objective lens. It's negative because we do end up with an inverted image. We can then take together the magnification of the objective lens with the magnification of the eyepiece. And remember, the eyepiece acts just like a magnifier. And remember that the magnifier, that the and remember that the magnification of a simple magnifier is 25 centimeters over the focal length of the, eye, of the magnifier. And so that's what we have here. 0.25 meters is 25 centimeters divided by the focal length of the eyepiece. And so you can multiply these two magnifications together, and it gives you the total magnification of the system. The minus sign shows that the image is inverted. And this magnification of a microscope is called its power. And you can easily get up to a thousand, easily. Okay, let's do a quick example. A student uses a microscope to view an amoeba. If the objective has a focal length of one centimeter, the eyepiece has a focal length of 2.5 centimeters, and the amoeba is 1.1 centimeters from the objective, what is the microscope's magnification? Well, let's just go ahead and see. We're going to want to use this equation right here, that the total magnification is the magnification of the objective times the magnification of the eyepiece. And then we can rewrite this as the length over the objective focal length times 0 0.25 meters over the eyepiece focal length. And really, at this point, this is a plug and chug. So our L, again, we're going to use this 160 millimeters. The objective focal length is one centimeter, but we really want it to cancel with this, right? We need all our units to cancel because our magnification should be unitless. So if this is in millimeters, we want to convert this to millimeters. And our eyepiece has a focal length of 2.5 centimeters. Again, it doesn't really matter that these units jive with these units. What matters is that all the units cancel 
So we end up with a unitless magnification. So my millimeters canceled here and my meters are canceling there. 160 by 10 is 16. 0.25 by 0. 0.025 is 10. And we end up with a magnification of negative 160. Negative, indicating that it's upside down. But I don't know. I, I, if you told me, if you showed me a picture of an amoeba, I wouldn't be able to tell you whether it was upside down or right side up. So 